Hello, welcome to another cloud computing class. Today we'll create our first microservice. I will call it Minipost and it will be a Twitter-like application where you can post your interests to a wall where other users can go and extract the data. I have in mind something like this as a data model. So there should be information about a user, a title, some text that is a description of my post, hashtag, location, the URL. That's, for example, a URL of an image that I want to post. And the date is just a timestamp for me to keep up with the post. I will use the same architecture that I used in the previous sessions. I will have a database and this database, it will be a MongoDB instance. We already created that. I will have a web server in Node.js and this will be my backend system. So my data tile is represented in the database with the MongoDB and my logic tile is actually the Node.js with this web server that I will create. I also want to create the basic functionality, what we call also the CRUD methods, that is to create data, read, update, and delete. So my, what I will call microservice in this case, the mini post microservice will connect to my database and it will allow me to interface with my database to perform the basic operations. The create will post data to my database, the read will get the data and bring it back to me. The update will help me to update the data and delete obviously if I want to delete some of my posts. To interact with this one, I will use one more time the Postman. So the front end for me, it will not be a traditional application such as React or Vue. So there are so many frameworks that we can use. You can go online on YouTube, probably you will find so many videos on how to connect to a Node.js backend. But in my case, I will run everything in Postman. I will just connect and run some basic commands. And this will be my presentation layer, right? So the front end will actually be able to run my four basic operations. So let's see how this microservice will look like, what it, what it could be the routes for me, or what we call also endpoints, and how can actually implement these four steps. Let's start with the post. The post is about adding a post in my database. This is my selected route. I will call it slash mini post. And in this slash mini post, I expect somebody to give me a request body. And this request body is whatever you want to post. This is my, my data. And this data should look like this. We'll talk about validation and how to control this data in the next sessions. For the moment, we assume that the user will give us a perfect data set. This is also a JSON object. That means the data that we expect to have it actually in this particular format. Now, the response, that means my service will send back to the user, is a JSON object that is actually the record that you used, right? So whenever you insert data, you will get back the data that I inserted in MongoDB. So it will be a validation step for me to verify that the data is inserted. When you respond back to the user, you add some extra information, for example, the ID, that is something that is generated automatically from MongoDB, and the date, that is something that I will generate myself whenever there is a new record. Why should I not keep the date um, as a timestamp from the current uh, post? So the user will not have to insert the date, I will extract it myself from my system. And that's the post method. The second method that I will see is the get, and the get is about getting data from the database, selecting data from the database. It's a traditional query, for example, select from my database where my ID equals the ID of the user. So my path in this case, my root is slash mini post slash ID, and this ID is the ID from my post that I have in my MongoDB. So I will get a post, I will need to give the request this ID, all right, and I will get back a response. And this response, it will be, in my case, a JSON object representing the data that I want to extract. So you will give one ID, you expect to see one response back. So that's the get, and that's the get to get all the posts. So if you see the difference is here that I go directly to my mini posts, I just use the get method. I don't use the mini post slash ID as I used before. I just want to extract everything. In this case, my response, it will be everything. Let's assume that we have two um, data points in my database. I will extract both and I will see everything. In case I have thousands of points in my database, again, this query will extract everything. The patch method is what we call update as well. And we use the patch to update the data. What I expect is to have a request parameter. That is the ID that the user will give me and the body of my update request, that is, for example, a JSON object. 
So supposedly I want to find this particular ID from my database, extract it, update it, and then the service responds back to me and say, you know, I, I updated my data, that's fine. Or if there is a problem, you will see an error message. So the response always is a verification or error message, and usually it comes in JSON format. The delete is the last method that we'll see today, and delete is about deleting a post. What you need to do is a request parameter, the ID of the post that you want to delete, and as a response, what you take back is a verification message that is, for example, one record deleted, or an error message that says, you know, there is an error, connection to the database, or this record doesn't exist, so we can customize the errors as we like. So, now we know more or less what we want to do. We need to create a microservice using Node.js. We have to implement four key functionalities, although the get includes two steps. Still, we are talking about reading data from my database. Okay, so let's do this in Node.js. Let's start. Okay, so I'm in my Visual Studio code and I will start my tasks. The first task always is to just create a new folder and initialize your project. So we'll click here on the Explorer, open folder. I will go to my desktop and I will create a new folder. I will call it mini post up and just open the folder and you should be fine. So I will trust the authors and I'm ready to go. Open a new terminal as usual and initialize your npm package here, npm init, press enter. I just want to go fast here, that's fine. Um, is this okay? Yes. And I can see now my package.json here. Open it, you can see it here. Let's install the two main libraries that we need, npm install. And these are the express packets. And also we need the node mon packets to help us restart the servers. Okay, so this is installing now. Um, while this is installing, I know already that I will create this start script that can help me to start the server. It's time. So nodemon app.js and that will me help me to restart my server as we said. Now we already know that this is um, a web application, a web service let's call it, with a database. So probably I will need to install also the mongoose packets. So I will do it now because I know about this and we did that in the previous class. Okay, it's ready. I can see here I have express, mongoose and node mode installed. Close your packet.json, we don't need anymore. Let's start with a new fresh app.js and we will slowly, slowly build it up. We have a lot of work to do. Um, so let's start and see how we go, we are doing. Um, a constant express, require express, if you remember, this is about um, importing my library. So I'm importing express and then I create a constant app that this is an express app and I think I should be okay. I will create my usual home root, all right? So I would call it like that. Request response just to check that everything is fine. My server is up and running. Everything works. And you know, send back res.send and home page. And that should be enough. I don't want more text here. App.listen. My server will listen at port 3000. And will console log a message that says server is running. Console.log. Server is up and running if you like you can capitalize s save this and let's give it a go npm start yep it looks that this is working now i will go to my postman and let me try localhost localhost at port 3000 send the message it says here home page so my get so you can see here my get request brings me back my home page it should be fine let's continue now it's it's bad practice to send text instead of sending json objects back but this is just to demonstrate my server is working i will go back to my visual studio code and i will continue my tasks the second task for me it will be 
to create a new root and this root it would be for example uh, posts all right and this is posts i will post a mini post to my mongodb database so let me create a new folder here i will call it roots all right and inside roots i will create a new file and i will call it posts post.js in the posts as we say usually we create a root and for every different functionality we can create a different root and we can like that control the files and the code that we have in the file so we don't have a one file with a huge amount of code so let's start with the first with the posts so what i have to do i have to um create again the express library import it create a new router and this router is an express dot router so we have an express router and what we'll need here is to create let's create our first router tribe that, that that works and then we'll see how we can actually start doing other things request response this is what we did in the previous class so you should be able to do these things right so request response let's send back again you are in posts so this is posts we need to if you remember we need to export the router always and to export the router we just type a module.exports router okay save it and let's go back to the app.js now in the pack.app.js what i will do is i will i will export the posts and i will import in my app.js so i go here i leave some space just to control what i have constant before i say require i will call it post root whatever you like well i will call it posts root in my case and here i will say this one requires your roots and in your roots supposedly to connect to the posts so i have my constant post roots and here i will say app dot use and each time you want to go to the posts url so i have to put here my uh, slash posts and um, you have to connect this to the post root all right so i just create a path here but well, that's that's my root i use my root um i save this so let me go back to my postman and say now posts you are in posts again just trying around right ideally we cannot use this as a service we don't want to send text back we need to send our json object that we'll do in a second so imagine when we go to the posts and we say you know get posts you will get all the posts from your database all right um before we do that obviously we need to insert some data to my database and see how how this works so let me go back to my visual studio code and the next step for me it will be to create um, my data model so i need to use the mongoose package to create my data model and this data model i will i will use it whenever i need to post data read data update data or delete data so let's start here by creating a new folder i will call it models and let me build my model here that i will call it post.js in my case and post is about uh, this kind of data set that we discussed before you have you know a title you have your username a description hashtag all these things right so we need to somehow come up with a data model here so in the posts what i will do is i will create my schema so constant mongoose i use the mongoose um, package that is this my representation here okay of the data uh, require mongoose in my case it's just like simple like a table of data right constant post schema post schema we'll call it like that why not mongoose dot schema so this post schema that i create is a mongoose schema right and here i will just create my my schema let's see what we have we have a user and the user if you remember is of type string obviously it should be text comma and i can just provide here some extra validations so for example in this case i will say you should always add a user 
name, let's say, in my application, right? You cannot just leave it empty. So user is there and it should be required. Title. My title is of type string again and required true. All right. Now what I will do is I will copy this because probably I will have to create many of these. So I don't have to, to type again and again and again. Um, hashtag. Let's put the hashtag. Hashtag. That is type of string again. Required is true. Location. Um, my location. Um, right. I think I should not add the brackets. Just press enter. And this is location here. Okay. And my next one is URL. I think we should. I think we had URL. So I will do it like that. I will change it to URL. And I think that should be all. Let me just add also the date. We also add the date because the date is type date and this kind of timestamp that we will have, right? So whenever you post, you will take the timestamp of your post default. It will be date dot now. It's good practice always to keep the date. Let's export this post module dot exports equals mongoose all right mongoose dot i think it's mongoose dot model and we just have to map to map this one to the database name database collection all right so i will call it posts in my in my mongodb so make sure this post here matches the name of your collection and here I will say, you know, that's my post schema. So we'll go here. I will say this is my post schema. And it should be fine. I think I have my post schema ready. Uh, that's good news because now I can start doing more things. All right. So I will start organizing myself with this uh, post.js. So I will just close this. Hopefully I have a typo here. You can see here you don't need to use the double code. Right. So let's save it here and let's close this. And now we can start with the posts. Let's go to the posts and we can just get rid of this because we don't need it now. Um, I will use the MongoDB to insert some data. What this means, this means that I need to go back to my MongoDB. Let's find my MongoDB, probably somewhere here. Um, let me log into my MongoDB, log in with Google. I will use my account login. In MongoDB, a couple of things that we need to do. All right, so you are here in your in your case. I will create a new database. So I will go databases, and I will create my database. So I have to click browse collections, and here I will click create database, and I will call it mini posts, and the collection name it has to to match the name of my model. Right, so this is exactly the name. So I call it here posts in my model. So I have to go back to my here and call it posts as well. Right, it has to be the same. Create now. We will create this um, mini posts here. All right, so just close everything here that I might have. Let's go here to the posts. It should be empty because we just created, we don't have anything there. And we will use the postman to insert data this time. We'll not do it by hand in the cluster here. All right. So let's go back to my Visual Studio code. Again, I don't need this now. I will close it. And I will start by creating my first post. So I will say here router.post. All right. The user will go to this slash path. Okay. So for example, it will go to my localhost and send some data. I expect this to be in my database, right? So I know now that this is an asynchronous call, request response. I should also know that I would make an await call to, to save the data, right, in my case. So what I will do first, I will first use my model. So I will create this tweet data, all right, to extract the data from the uh, from the user. Now, before we do that, let's let's see how actually what the user will send me just to, to see how the user sends data, right? So I will say console.log. 
the user will send me some data. We'll call it request.body. All right, and we'll see what is this body. So let's let's console log this. Let's print what the user will send me. So let me go back to my postman. I will change here to post. I'm in posts already. I will go to my body and I will select row and then I will click on the JSON here. All right, so I, I just configure here my posts. I suppose there is an application that requests to send me a post message and this is a row JSON file. It should be a row JSON file. And here, this is the body. Right? This space here is the body. So my body includes the following. It has a user. Okay, as my model, let me open my model one more time. It has a user, a title, a hashtag, location, URL, and date. Okay, user, um, my user is Telios. Um, next one, let's see here. It should be exactly the same. Title, my title is hi. Hashtag, oh, I think we didn't add here the description, right? So let's add some description to have. Um, description. All right, we can call it text. My the text so type string and required true. Right, you should add all this information. Text so the user will say text and will say hi, I'm Stelios. This is my first post. Let me go back. So we have user title text. We have hashtag, location, URL, and date. Okay, let's put the hashtag first. Hashtag. And my hashtag will be something like, let's say, game, right? Games, video games. Okay, let's call it video games. Supposedly, I like video games. And that's my category. Location, location, and the location is London, in my case. And we said we have URL, and the URL, it should be something like, you know, stelios.com. Let's put something like that. And that should be fine because we say the date will, it will be automatically generated, right? So I have here my text. I can just send this. And you can see here it says send a request. And I can go back to my, my service now. And I see here, it says undefined. Hmm. Why is that? You remember here we say, can you console log print what you are supposed to send? Now, this undefined means that you are receiving some data that you don't know what data is supposed to be. But we already know that this is supposed to be a JSON file. So what I will do, I will go here in my terminal, control C, all right? Control C one more time to break my server. I will have to install a package and this package will help me to process, to parse the data. So npm install my package. It should be called body parser. That's a body parser. It's the package to parse the data. I go to my app.js and on the top of my app, I will have before these things, all right? I will have to import my, my body parser. So I will make here body parser a new variable require my body parser perfect oops perfect and here uh, this is my my require right and here before this app use before always because if we put it after um, it will work after so it will not work actually right so before whatever you create the first thing to do it will be to say you know just think about this everything that is coming in my application as a json object so i will have to say body parser dot json let's save this go back to the postman and let's send it one more time all right and let's go back yes it says here um could not send obviously my server is not running so let me start my server go back to my postman send it don't worry here, we, do, we don't send anything back. This is why we see this wait method. And I can see here, yes, I have it. So that's great. I just received my first data from a user. That's a big deal. So let me now go here and stop it, cancel it. That's fine. Let's see how we'll save the data. First, we have to save the data and then 
we have to do something with this. Right, so we took the data in the post and we have it in this re request.body parameter. Okay, and this request.body has request.body user, request.body title, request.body text. All these variables here, and how many we have? We have six variables user title text, hashtag location URL, plus the date that we don't use when we need to save because this is saved automatically. Right, so my first step it will be to create my connector to database. Now, let me go back to my um, MongoDB. I will click again here on the databases. Now, if you remember, we need to extract the connector, connect. Connect to your application, not JS for or later. I, I just disable this include full driver. I don't want to see all this code. All right, just, just this URL. Copy this. Again, here what we have, we have student and password, right? That's my 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 username and my password. Okay, so let's go up, up to up to JS, back to up to JS. Let's use the mongoose package. We already installed it, so we don't have to do it again. Constant mongoose, require mongoose, and we are good to go. Now, we create a connector somewhere here. So we say here, uh, mongoose.connect, connect, if you remember, and we're supposed to give here a URL, the mongoose URL. And then we just create here our callback to say in my console that my server, my database is now connected. DB is now connected. And that's good news. Yet, one of the things that we don't want to do anymore, and it's a bad practice, is to give here a URL with username and password. So we don't want to do this for many reasons. The first reason is that imagine you push this code to a GitHub repo and somebody else goes there and edit your code and you can see your credentials, right? So we don't want to do this. Also, you know, if you if you put this in a public directory, uh, everybody can go and connect to your database using this string. Again, we don't want to do this. So it's a very bad practice to use here a username and password. So what we'll do? We will use what we call the .env. So there is a file that we'll call it .env, and I will just create it here. .env, press enter. And in this .env file, that is a configuration file, I will create a variable called that DB connector. And I will just paste here my string, right? This is the string, the connection string that I took from MongoDB. I have to change here student name student remains the same, is my username, password. It should be like that, student and your password, and that's it. And save this. So I just created this .env file. Now, a practice that we do is whenever we push our code in the GitHub, we ignore the .env file, so nobody will see our password. So we don't share this .env file. We have it only locally in our computer, or if we push it after in, in our server, we need to configure it somehow. All right, we'll see how we do these things in the future. For the moment, we just, you know, think about what is the best practice for us to use. So my .env is here. The name is dbconnector. I go back to app.js. And to work with this .env, I will need to install a package. So this package will help me to find out where this dbconnector is in my .env. So I will go here. And this is crust, obviously, because we have this MURL that doesn't mean anything. So click here on your terminal, control C, again, control C. All right, so we will need to install a package, right? So if I remember correctly, we need to install a package that is called npm install dot env. It's quite hard to, to forget. So if the file is called dot env, just install the dot env package. All right, it's now ready. I will go here on the top of my app, right? So all these libraries, we, we have it in the app. And somewhere, let's say here, after the mongoose, I will say here, require this package, right? I don't have to import this package and create a variable. I just have to say, you know, .env and config. That's the way we import the .env file. I imported my .env file. Now here in the MURL, we need to say process.env, env, not env, env, dot 
the name of your connector, DB connector. Make sure this DB connector is the same as this DB connector. You see here, I don't have any spaces, I don't have single quotes. It's not a variable here, right? It's just a configuration file. This is a connection string. So DB connector equals your connection string. No spaces, don't, don't put single quotes or double quotes, anything. That should be okay now. Go back to app.js. Now, I don't need any more this one. I can save it. Just close it. Here, what I did, I added this requirement here for this config of the .env. And here I say process.env.db connector. Okay, let me save and let me try. Now, npm start. I should be able to connect to my database without using the connector in the app.js. As you can see, the server is up and running and that's very good news. Okie dokie. The next step for us, it will be now to go to my posts and supposedly I have my, my connection ready. So what I will do is I will import always, import here my post, constant post. This is the post from the, the model. So require, require double dots here because we need to go one level up. I will go to my models and inside my models, I want my post. So I, I just inserted my model. I will use this post that represents my model. And this is actually the mongoose model to insert data in my database. So I will go here under this console.log that I don't need it anymore. Just make it a comment. I will do this. I will extract the data from the body and insert the data in my database. Again, this is the body. This is the body in JSON format. And the body has a user title, text, hashtag, location, URL. I will extract this from the body. And then I will insert this in my database. So I have to create a, a, an object, a JSON object for my database. I will call it post data. And this is a new post according to this new post model new post and this new post will have a user user and this user is has a request dot body dot user and that's exactly what i extract from this postman okay so what the user will send me if the user will send me here for example username something like that i have to go here and say username it has to match exactly what the user will send me so i will leave it user in my case just to have it always as user. And then I have to go here and say now my title, it should be request dot, not require, request dot body dot title. My text, it should be request dot body dot text. My hashtag, it should be request dot body dot hashtag. Let me just verify what I'm doing. User title, text, hashtag, okay, location, two more. Location, request.body.location, and URL, request.body.url. Okay, I did it. I created, I didn't insert yet, I created my model according to what the user gave me in the body. Now, let's try now to insert the data. We always say try to insert because sometimes we might fail. And in this file, in the, in the cases that we fail, we need just to catch the error. And we can say here, let's send it back. Rest.send. Rest.send. Um, send a message and an error. As you can see, I send it. Sorry, I forgot the parenthesis here. I send it as a JSON object because from now on, whatever I do, it should be a JSON representation. Whatever I send back to my browser, it should be JSON. It's a good practice. So try. Again, don't worry about the errors because in the next class, we will customize it. We'll talk about this uh, 404 famous error. You probably see a lot. So constant to post, post, post to save. Let's call it like that. So this is the post to save that the user gave me. Remember, I need to wait. So I say I wait and I will use this post data here, this variable, post data, to save it in MongoDB. 
Okay, so what I will do, I will save this data and I will send it back to the user. So I just save it. So I will say now res.send, send back to the user this post to save. Let me just save this. Let me just delete some spaces here and just put it here so you can see the whole code. So organize a bit my space. So I need, I just created this router.post that post the data asynchronously, extract the data from the post that the user sent me and save the data. Save this, go back to my postman and the moment of truth, let's send this. It looks that it works because I received back my object from my database. Let's go back to my database. All right, let's close this. This window it was from before. Browse collections. Go to your mini posts and posts. I don't see anything here. I did the obvious mistake. You can see here, I forgot to change the name of my database. Let's go back to my Visual Studio code and find my .env. Yes, I don't want to save data in my first database, but in my mini post. Mini post here, mini posts, I think, mini posts with an S. Let me go back and see mini posts. You see here, mini posts, posts. Right, let's go back now to my postman, send it one more time. Okay, it will come a new object back, but this time I save it to the correct database, not to the incorrect. So let me refresh here. And I should probably, uh, wait, I don't know if I save it. Let me go here, save this. Student in the mini posts, mini posts, posts. Okay, let me save this, um, send it from the postman. One more time, go back to my, um, my Google Chrome, refresh my, my databases here. Um, all right, it doesn't come for some reason, but continues coming here. I don't know. Let me see. Yes, it keeps coming here in my first database for some reason, right? So let me go back. Um, let me just break this control C. Um, it just keep connecting to the same database, right? So let me just start it one more time. NPM start. These things can happen, right? Usually you should connect also to the correct database. All right. So let me go back here, send it one more time. And let me go here. Refresh my mini posts one more time. Yes, it's here now. So if you forget to change the name, you will come up with the same error with me. And that's totally fine. We don't really care. I can go now here, my first database that I just created, right? I can delete it. So let me delete this. I don't want to keep this anymore because I did accidentally. <laughs> All right, so the, the, we are in my mini posts and posts. And we have one record that says I'm Stelios. Good stuff. I was able to insert data using Postman. Let's insert another data set. Mary. Uh, hi, I'm Mary. All right. I like, I love, not like Super Mario. Okay, Mary is a fan of Super Mario video games from London. And Mary.com. Send the second record. The data is here. Go back to your to your cluster here, refresh the data. Data, it should be here. We should have two records here. Stelios and Mary. Yes, we have it. Go back to your Visual Studio code. Close this EMV. The post, I don't need it anymore. It works and that's fine. And what I need, I need now to finish with the rest of my tasks. So let me put here a title and this title, it should be post. Right, this is the post. We did the post. And post is create data. Create is this C from the CRUD. Okay, the first task for us. We have four tasks. Right, we did one. Let's let's continue now. The second task for me, it will be to get all the data. So when I go here in my um in my postman and say get the post, get the post, I should get back here two data objects, Mary and Stelios. So let me go and do it in Visual Studio Code. So router.get. I should be able to get data because we did that in the previous class. So I will say here, asynchronous call, request response. 
and here in this request response what we'll do we will try to get the data let me copy now the error we will catch the, the error the usual stuff okay and here inside the try i will say constant get posts i will call it like that await so post equals await post post is the name of my model that i have here find all right so let me go here and you can see that post is the name of my model and here i say post.find obviously res.send send this back to the user and we call it get posts so send it back if it works well there's only one way to to see if it works let me send this and let me see here yes you can see here on the bottom let me just get it a little bit up i have both now when you make a get you have a body or you don't have a body that doesn't really anything right because i can just click here none and i can send it right because the get doesn't send anything so if you have your body just have it there it will not get sent to the service right so get all the posts and now what i can do is get all the posts by id something like this i would just you know extract a specific post so i will go back to my visual studio code it's similar to this that this is the second op um, operation that is get in my case is read and r from the crab now this is the first get get one we can call it always we do two gets get one is to get everything a get two is to get what you need only it's what you, what the user requests and that's like a query now to read by id we will have to say here get this post id so i will just adapt a little bit my code get this post id and instead of finding everything you will say here find by id and here i will have to say request dot params dot post id and this post id is this post id so so the user will give me a parameter now we have the parameters that the user will give me in the url and we have the body and the body is what the user will give me in the body that's the main text right let's give it a go i think it should work in this case i will just rename this get post because it's just one post maybe get post by id to keep my code clear and clear and nice by id and let me go back to my visual studio code okay another moment of truth give it a go yes i can extract data only for stellius right let's get everything again all right let's try mary now select mary's id click here press enter yes it works it's always nice when it works right um <laughs> it's not all the time it's not always so don't worry if you have an error go back and find out what was the error when i created these things first time i had so many errors that's totally normal and now we did our second right so this is the first one the post the second is the get and the second part of the second is the get all by id now the third part it will be to uh, update and update is called patch actually it's not called update so you want to update data let's go go here and you say patch where's the patch patch so patch means update data now when you update data you make something like a post because at the end of the day you need to send something so you go here row json probably you will have mary from before and what i want to do is i want to change mary's location title i will say you know hi i'm mary hi 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 there let's let's do it like that from hi let's make it hi there from london i will make it athens oops i press ctrl s in my case you don't do that so i changed my title and my location I, this is the only thing i want to do now don't have this ready so i suppose somebody will give me an id will give me the new text they will send it and i will update it or i can patch it as they usually say let's go back to my visual studio code and do the patch now the patch 
it could be a little bit tricky because we need to control a lot of things. Now, I have to, first of all, use something similar to the post because the user will give me all this information. I don't want to type all this. I will just copy. So I will extract the data from the user body. So I will just say here, router.patch. When you go here in your, let's say, post ID, the user will give me a post ID. I will make this asynchronous call with request response. And here, let's start adding a couple of things. First of all, you will give me some data. So I will extract the data as I did before with the post. So I have my data. Um, all right, so try. And again, let's catch the error if there is an error. All right, try catch. Okay, just let me do this here, clean a little bit of space. Now, what I will try, I will try to update your data. And when we say update means connect the database and run a query. All right, let's see how we'll do this, okay? I will say something like const update post. All right, post by ID. You can call it like that if you like, all right? I wait, post, and this is called update one, the method of Mongo, because we will update one, because there is one ID. Update one. What I will update? I will do this. I will set. This is the method set. I will I will set. Let me just put the space here. Okay. Just let me click somewhere else. I will set the data to the new data. Right. So set means update. Now before you set the data, what you need to do is to match this ID. So this ID in the database, it should be the same request.params params, okay, dot post ID, right? So the first step is to match your ID in the database with the ID of the user. The second step is to set the data to the new post data, all right? So I will say here, I will take it from here now the user, it will be the user, the title, the URL, okay, so I will take everything from here, I will put it here, let me organize my code here, put some tabs, okay, I will, I have some errors, I will fix it here, I think here, set, I think this is an object also, forgot to put my, my brackets, so let me just set my brackets here, another bracket here, all right, so this bracket close here, on this one, this bracket close here. Okay, just counting my brackets. All right, I think it's fine now. I cannot see an error. So I don't need this. I just put it here to remind me what I, I have, right? So let me get rid of this. And let's examine together this code for the update. That looks difficult, but it's not really. So first thing we say here, try to update by ID. Use the update one method. And you need to do two things. The first, find the record that has this ID. ID is the record parameter post ID that I take from my from my user. Secondly, set everything to the new data. So if the user sends you new data, it will be there. If the user doesn't send you anything or send you the same data, again, it's fine. I will just keep the old. All right. So in my case, let me go back and try it now. At the end of the day, we didn't send anything back. So here somewhere. All right. So let me just make Put this parenthesis up, maybe here, okay. I will say res.send, send this update post by ID back to the user to see that, you know, everything works. All right, so let me go back and let's pray now that this will work. Let's send the, the path. Okay, it says here, I match one, that's good because it found it, and I modify one. So let me see here now, the data for Mary. Mary, it should say Athens, not London. And the high there, it should be high, high there is the new record. So go here and say get Mary. Yes, it's a high there and Athens. If we need still to change something, let's say 3wmary.com. So I want to change only this. Send it. This is the get. Let me go back to the patch. Patch this. 
match one, modified one, one record, not one, one part of the record. Let's get now everything for Mary. And we can see here the, the new URL. So I was able to do these things. And that's good news because I can now control a lot of things. Now, let me go back to my Visual Studio code. And I, again, one more time for the patch method that looks a little bit more challenging. The only thing I have to do is to create my query in MongoDB to update the data, this part, right? First, we match and second, we set. That's the patch. Now, last, last one is the delete. Usually we don't want to delete data, but you never know. Let's see how we can do that. So the delete, router.delete, it should be more or less similar to the patch, but instead of finding the data and updating, it should be finding and delete. So I will say here, delete. When you go to this one and somebody sends delete, but it will give me a post ID. What I will do, I will make an asynchronous call and again, request response my callback all right let's do this so i will say constant delete post by id i wait i wait the post dot delete again i want to delete one because there is just one by id here i will say which one you want to delete? Well, I want to delete the one that I have that matches my ID. So the ID, it should be the same as the request.params.postID. Yes, post ID here. Post ID. That's the post ID of the user. So this is the post ID of the user. This is the ID of the database. Now, this should be the same as before. Again, the same here, right? Whenever we need to match something, in our query, we can use it in this way. Let me delete here the space. All right, this is my code. What I forgot, I forgot to say. Let's try this. Okay, it's always a good practice to wrap everything in a try catch. You never know what can go wrong. Error. And here, let's send back here rest.send this message and error the error that i i have and here i forgot to say you know send back this delete delete post by id and here i forgot to close my parentheses usual stuff now if it is so short i can actually put in the same line and i think it should look better so try this, catch the error, let me put the cuts here, uh, fix your indentation, always to look easy to read, so others can actually understand what you are doing much easier. Save this, delete this parenthesis here that for some reason stayed from before, organize your code here, Just delete the spaces, and now let's save, I don't see any errors, and that's good news, let's go and delete guy from my database i will do it for let's get everything first so i will go here in the post and say bring me all get okay uh, this is a get so i don't need to give a body so that's your data let's get rid of stelios let's select the id of stelios and let's go here and say delete and just put here id of stelios and let's see send and I have an error. So that's fine. I will see what is the error. Let's go back here. It says, let me see. You have an unexpected token in your code. All right. I can see the error. Yeah, I forgot this. <laughs> All right. Typical stuff. Okay. Let's go back now. I'm trying to get this post ID, but I should put it in this format. Give it a go. One more time. Yes. I was able to delete my user stelios. So user deleted, uh, it says just one, all right? So I can go here and say, let me see now, let me get everybody. And yeah, Stelios is not here anymore. I just delete Stelios. That's good. Let me go back to my Visual Studio code and let's, again here, let's see everything is running. Let's try to wrap up a little bit our discussion for today. So what we did, we created 
the first method that is called POST to create data. Right. One important thing here. Always we need to create a new model. All right. So this will be mapped to the model of Mongo Mongoose and Mongoose will help us to do this directly in the MongoDB just in one line here. Quite easy. Now, the moment you create your, your model, you extract everything from your data and then you save this to your database. If I go back now here and, you know, I don't put, for example, a user in my, in my body, I would probably see an error because we don't have any kind of validation. We'll do this in the next session where we actually go and control what the user gives us. If, for example, they give us the correct data, if it is a string, right? So we'll think about all the small things that can go wrong. For the moment, we don't care. We, we assume that everything is perfect. We try and we catch the error. The save here is the method to save the data, all right? Assuming that you created also your model already. Now, the second method is the get. And we have get to read, read all. We can call it like that, read all, or read by ID. And here, what I do is I get everything using the find. Now, that's not, not a good idea because if you have thousands of points, you will come up with a huge amount of data in your browser. So you can say, you know, I want to limit in the first 10. You can do these things here if you like, just to see a sample of the data, let's call it. Here also, you can say read by ID. And read by ID means I just pass my ID in my, in my request as a parameter from the user. I get this post ID and just add it here. That's fine. Finally, we have the patch that is, well, it's a little bit tricky because we need to get the post ID from the user, match it with the post ID of the database, and then set the new data to the data that the user gave me. And then I have to update this. Just always send back your data to see what's happening. And this always sends back what is the output of MongoDB. Actually, we capture the output of MongoDB. And finally, we have the delete. So delete, well, we delete the data. We need to create this method, although it's not a good practice to delete data. Usually what we do is we, we make a copy of the data rather than delete it. All right, so that would be all. I hope now it's a little bit clear how to create your first REST API. This is what we did. We create our first RESTful API. We implemented the four key functionalities and we were able to test it using Postman. We already used the .env, and that's the idea of saving our username and password in a, in a configuration file, rather than having it inside the code. That is very bad practice. In the next session, in the next class, we will focus on how to make this better in terms of validations, verify the data, and a couple of more things about security. That would be a very interesting topic because most of the cases, whenever we need to create an API, we need somehow to secure it under an authentication protocol. That's what we'll discuss in the next session. For the moment, try this one a couple of times, play around. If you have an error, don't worry, go again and do it one more time. That would be all, and I will see you soon in our next class.